Hello, welcome to this fourth episode of Stories from the Book of Hopes. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the stories when the staff have been reading them to you. It's such a lovely book. You might be able to read some of the stories on your own. In fact, what you could do is write some stories of your own. That would be really good. You could write some stories and draw some pictures and we could make our own book of hopes. That would be a really lovely thing to do. You could be the contributing authors and illustrators. I'd love that idea. If you have some good stories and some nice illustrations, you can send them into the office. There's a special email address that your mums and dads use and you can use that email address to send in your stories and um, drawings. I hope you enjoy this next episode. Take care. Our first story today will be read by Mrs Fisher and is called Be More Cat, written by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Good morning, St John's. Um, I hope you're all well and keeping safe and busy. Um, I'm so excited to be reading to you today and I had to have a real think about what I was going to choose. Now, some of you, especially my lovely viewers, will know that recently I got a new kitten called Oberon, who is getting a little bit sleepy over here on his favourite blanket now. And he can be a little bit of a scamp sometimes. He likes to run around and chase me and pounce at me. He likes to um, nibble things he shouldn't be nibbling. But there's also a lot of really wonderful things that Oberon does that I think um, that we can learn a bit about. So when I came across this piece of writing um, by a lady called Kieran Millwood Hargrave, who's actually a friend of my sister's, um, I thought I have to share it with you all. So this is a piece of writing called Be More Cat. When I want to feel really happy, I think, like my cat, my cat leads what might appear to be a very simple life to you or me, but she leads the most exciting, dangerous and contented existence anyone could imagine. Where you or I see a sliver of sunlight cutting across the carpet, she sees a warm cloud, perfect for sleeping. Where you or I see a pile of laundry ready to be put in the machine, she sees a cushiony cloud, perfect for sleeping. Where you or I see a newspaper, she sees a crinkly cloud, perfect for sleeping. But it's not all about sleeping. The life of a cat is fraught with responsibility. Where you or I see that same pile of laundry, now hung out to dry on the line, she sees ghosts and must use all her skill in claw climbing to slay them. Where you or I see a box, she sees uncharted territory to be explored, conquered and sat in. Where you or I see a friendly neighbourhood stray, she sees a tiger, who must be hissed at and chased, tail made fluffy as a raccoon's. Where you or I see geese flying in their perfect V high in the sky, my tiny white and black cat sees dinner and leaps with all her mind. So, live your life with the self-belief of a tiny black and white cat, leaping with the conviction she can swat birds from the sky, slay ghosts and scare tigers. Imagine a world where a house is a kingdom, a box is a throne. Take love wherever you can find it, move to find the last warm parts of the day, spend hours excited by a leaf. But maybe don't try the bottom licking. So my new motto is be more cat. And remember, if ever the adventures become too much, there's always a cloud, crinkly warm and cushiony waiting. I really like that piece of writing. And I think at the moment, it's quite tricky to keep ourselves interested when we are at home and we're not able to go to school or see many of our friends at the moment. But I think, what can we learn from our cats? Well, we can always find imagination in the things around us and keep ourselves interested and have the belief that you can do and be anything. Um, I hope you are all healthy and safe. Um, it's been so lovely reading to you. So from Oberon and myself, um, I'll see you all soon. Bye. Our next story, written by Jessica Townsend, is Shark Puncher, and it is read by Mrs Briars. 
This story is called Shark Puncher and is by Jessica Townsend. There was a girl in the ocean waiting for a wave to surf. She'd been paddling for ages when a very large shark leapt up and bared its very sharp teeth. My mum's a shark puncher, the girl shouted, squeezing her eyes shut and waiting to be chomped. Improbably, the shark paused. Your mum's a what? The girl blinked and felt a little strange because a very large shark was talking to her. Shark puncher? She repeated, trembling. She punches sharks professionally. She'll punch you to death if you hurt me. Oh, the shark bobbed in the water. That's mean. Not as mean as trying to eat someone. He swam around her once, twice. She watched the fin and waited for teeth, pulling her legs in close. The shark emerged again. Look, I was hungry, but you're right. If I don't want people to punch me, I shouldn't try to eat them. She thought he might leave then, but he stayed, swimming in circles. What's your name? she asked. He glanced sideways. Sorry? What should I call you? The shark's face didn't change, or not in any way she could decipher. Don't know what you're saying. She rolled her eyes. I mean... Oh, no, OK, I get what you mean. I do have a, a thing. Uh, what do you call it? A name? Right, I have one but I don't think you could pronounce it. Try me. The shark gave a strangled, guttural, gurgling roar. The girl tried to copy him. She sounded like an upset donkey. No, it's more like... The shark made the noise again. It sort of comes from the back of your... Like this. He made the noise again, and the girl tried again, but she sounded like an indignant walrus. Maybe I should just leave it. Yeah. He looked as disappointed as it was possible for a shark to look. It's probably just like a shark fin. You might not have the right mouth or whatever. They were silent a while, listening to the distant cry of seagulls, each worrying the other had grown bored. You could give me a different name, he suggested. I don't mind. Really? She sat up eagerly. How about Leonard? Leonard the shark? He didn't sound impressed. Don't you like it? It was my uncle's name. I can choose something different. No, no, it's your uncle's name. That's nice. Yeah, she dangled one leg in the water. I never met him, but my dad said he was a good bloke. Was a good bloke? Um, just like a decent person. Someone you like. The shark seemed pleased. Do you like me? The girl smiled, showing her teeth. She thought he might understand the language of teeth. Well, you did feel bad about trying to eat me. I wasn't really. I, I wasn't going to eat you, probably, he said. No, I was. I should be honest. I was fully going to eat you. But you didn't. No. My mum's not really a shark puncher, she admitted. No such job. Leonard expelled water from his nostrils. Whew, that's a relief. Sorry I said that. No, completely understandable. And Leonard swam for a bit and the girl paddled until a wave washed her ashore and they parted as friends, sort of, or at least neither eaten nor punched. Our final reading is a story read by Mrs Murphy and it's called A New Sun Up by Ben Bailey Smith. A New Sun Up. Brody couldn't believe his luck. Big Boss Gary was there, Big Boss Narnia was there. His whole team was there too. Team member Max, team member Layla and tiny new guy Pedro. I mean, tiny new guy Pedro was there most days anyway. And to be totally honest, Brody had felt as though big bosses and team members alike had been a little over-focused on the latest arrival. Recently, it seemed that whatever Pedro did, the rest of the team would react. He would scream and they would run about. He would cry and they would take him to the park. He would moan, and they'd get him dinner. Ten times every sun-up, it felt to Brody. When Brody moaned or cried, the results were rarely the same as that. Still, tiny new guy Pedro was both an official team member and a new smell, and Brody loved him, he supposed. Was it the attention or the food that Brody had been upset about? He couldn't remember. You see, Brody's memory was a little hazy now because time had changed. 
Every five sun-ups there used to be two sun-ups when the team was all together and he would run with them playing games and going to places that had food and drink and treats and cuddles and more running and new smells. Now every sun-up was the same. Or was it? The whole team was there. Every sun-up doing different things in different combinations. Big Boss Gary, Tim and Layla and Brody digging holes in the garden for ages. Brilliant. Team member Narnia, team member Max and Brody emptying out a massive cupboard and a smell he never smelt before. Quality. Big Boss Scary, tiny new guy Pedro and Brody walking around and around on wheels until Pedro was, went silent. Can't argue with that. It reminded Brody of all those other sun-ups from before this time. The one where they went to live on a field for a while in a tiny triangular house made of cloth. The ones where they were huge brown eggs as big as your head that made him sick and Layla cry. Even the cold ones with all the singing and the outside tree inside the house. It was incredible. Food, cuddles, runs, walks, exploration, new smells, long chats, team games, movies with cats in them. Every single sun up. What a time to be alive, bro, really thought. He'd heard from friends that too many new guys like Pedro often left both bosses and team members to ignore bigger not new guys like him. For now though, Brody felt more important than ever. At any given time, the food was plentiful, the cuddles were longer and there to be, appeared to be no shortage of cat movies. And for an old dog like Brody, that was a perfect sun up. <laughs>